Hello, and welcome to this short video showing the powers of using Inspect to do pitting assessments. Now, the pitting assessment is done for API 579 Part 6 in Inspect. And today I'm going to show you on this model how we can set up a pitting assessment and what the report will look like. So I have a horizontal vessel here. You can see here I've got many nozzles, loadings on them, saddle supported. I've got API 510 and integrity points added here, and I've got a metal loss grid. But this orange box right here represents the pitting. So right away you can see that you get a visual representation of the flaws that you're looking at when you're looking at an inspect model. Now to set these up, you simply come up to the API 579 menu and you'd select part six pitting corrosion. Now I've already gone ahead and modeled this, so what I'm going to do is edit this flaw by simply right clicking on it and selecting the pitting. And this would be the dialog. And the dialog is very intuitive and easy to use and understand. Now in inspect, pitting is done to both level one and level two, but there is also an option to do a level three assessment if the pitting location is both on the inside and outside of the vessel or the piece of equipment, since this also applies to piping as well. So the first thing you'll do when you get to the dialog is put in the identifier, I'll just call it pinning number one, and then the analysis type, if you wanna do a level one or a level two. Now I've set this up to be a level two, it's a little bit more complicated, and I'll switch it over to a level one after to show you what would be involved there. Then there's the pitting location, if it's on the inside of the equipment, outside, or again, if it's on both sides, which falls into a level three assessment right there. Then you simply locate the flaw center point on the piece of equipment, and then the option to perform a part three brittle fracture assessment is here for you as well. Now again, I'm always a big fan of running these because our part three brittle fracture assessment performs both a level one and level two assessment. And they're really derived from the rules of UCS 66 from ASME section eight division one. Jumping over to the right side, you can specify GPS location for this flaw. So again, if this is on a, a long pipe run or a pipe section, you may want to know where it is specifically in the field or if it's at an elevation, if you're going out. We've got lots of pieces of equipment on site. We want to make sure, do I have to go on top, on top of a tower to look at this or is it at ground level? Things like that. Then for the pitting type, you can choose between widespread or localized pitting and then enter in your loss and future corrosion allowance. And again, you'll have your corrosion surface if it's on the inside or outside. And then you can also track the flaw measurements over time. Now this is really handy because documentation is key for us. So if you wanna go back and check this flaw in say six months or a year, you can simply create a new inspection so you don't have to set up a new model. You can just keep saving it within this flaw and everything's documented for you. So those are the basic inputs to set up your flaw on the first screen. So I'll click next here. And for a level two assessment, You'll need to know the number of pit couples, the joint efficiencies, and the region you want to look at. So I just did a 45 by 45 inch square, and you can see here I have put in my uh, pit couple information, so your depth, your width, your spacing, things like that. Now when you click OK, that orange dialog will be modeled here. Now I'm going to right click on this and select pitting. Now probably the more commonly used assessment type is a level one. So if I select level one right here, I can click next. And you can see here that the second screen is really just asking for the pitting damage grade. So there's grades one to eight, and you simply match up the grade that you have on your piece of equipment and go from there. Now there'll be some more information such as your maximum pit depth, again, the size of the region you're looking at, and also an option to put in the flaw image. Because as you know, when we're looking at pitting, we need to take a measurement with a scale and a picture of that scale beside it for the assessment as well. And that's all you need to do to set that up. And then we run the assessment based on level one. I'll just cancel out of this here. So now that we're done setting it up, let's run the calculation. So again, simply just click the F3 button up here and we're at the output report. So you can see here on the left, you've got summary reports right here. You've got detailed reports for all the components that you've modeled and then down below, you've got your fitness or service report for your pitting. So like all the other reports you've seen, they're formatted in a similar way, very easy to read, professional, and everything is detailed out here for you. So you can see all the calculations that were performed, the values that we use as well as the formulas, so you can follow along with the output. And then once you're done reviewing the report, you can simply just click on the report icon and come back to the model, make any changes you may 
need to make or add more componentry flaws, whatever you need to do to this model. So that's how you can quickly add a pitting assessment on here. So let's just recap uh, what I showed you today. So our pitting assessment performs both a level one and two assessments. They're performed for both localized and widespread pitting. Your pitting damage can be assessed be based on internal, external, or both sides of the vessel, which is really a level three assessment. And a key one here is the interactions between the pitting region and local thin areas are supported. So when you have a local metal loss combined with a pitting region, those calculations are combined per the 579 for you. We also have the ability to upload an image for you so that when you take your scale and your image, you can associate that with the report as well. And finally, supplemental loads will be taken into account for you as well. So when things such as wind and seismic, lateral loads, liquid levels, that all factors into the assessment as well. Now, I hope you found this video very beneficial. If you have any questions or you'd like to see a detailed demonstration, please email sales at codeware.com or give us a call at 941-927-2670.